Miss Go Electric here. We hope you had a fun and happy Halloween weekend. Today is Sunday, November 2nd, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Kia has postponed the U.S. debut of its upcoming EV4 compact sedan indefinitely. The decision confirmed by a Kia spokesperson to Inside EVs comes amid cooling demand for electric vehicles and new policy headwinds. As market conditions for EVs have changed, the release of the upcoming EV4 electric sedan will be delayed until further notice, the spokesperson stated, emphasizing Kia's commitment to value-driven vehicles despite the setback. Unveiled in production form earlier this year and showcased at the New York International Auto Show in April, the EV4 was slated for early 2026 with a starting price under $40,000. Built on Hyundai Motor Group's eGMP platform in South Korea, the front-wheel drive sedan is expected to deliver up to 330 miles of EPA-estimated range with an 81 kilowatt-hour battery, 201 horsepower, and a North American charging system, or NAX port, for Tesla supercharger compatibility. A base model with a 58 kilowatt hour pack and 235 miles of range was planned for an even lower entry price. Kia remains committed to electrification globally, with the EV4 sedan and hatchback still on track for markets like Europe and Korea. Sister vehicle, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, launched in the US in mid-2023 and has seen modest sales growth since. In its debut year, the model delivered 12,999 units. Through the first nine months of 2024, sales reached 9,097 vehicles, a slight 9% increase from the same period in 2023, reflecting strong early momentum with monthly highs like 1,663 in August of 2023 before a 51% plunge to 808 units in August of 2024. As of Q3 of this this year, the brand has sold just 9,132 units. The Kia spokesperson said that no updates are available on their upcoming EV3 compact crossover that was planned for the U.S. next year. Do you think Kia made the right decision to delay the EV4 in the U.S.? Volkswagen Group's battery subsidiary, PowerCo, has officially kicked off construction on its $7 billion gigafactory in Ontario, Canada. This week, the pouring of the first concrete foundations for three major buildings on the 350-acre site took place. Steel structures are slated to be installed by year's end, with initial production on track for 2027. The facility marks the third and largest EV gigafactory worldwide for PowerCo, which is slated to produce up to 90 gigawatt hours annually, enough cells for about 1 million EVs. The project is expected to create up to 3,000 direct jobs and thousands more in the supply chain. The company also has two gigafactories under construction in Germany and Spain, both with a 40 gigawatt hour annual production target, with the Germany site expected to begin production within months. The plant will manufacture what the company is calling a unified cell battery technology for several of Volkswagen's brands. The unified cell is described as a prismatic battery cell design with a standardized dimension which can be adapted for different applications and a variety of cell chemistries, including solid state. They plan to deploy it in passenger cars, trucks, and buses. The Canadian federal government has agreed to provide $13 billion worth of subsidies over the span of a decade to support the project. On top of that, Ottawa is offering nearly $700 million in capital expense grants through its Strategic Innovation Fund. Canadian officials say the subsidies will go into effect after the construction of the plant is complete. The facility is projected to be Canada's largest factory by footprint when it begins production. Volkswagen isn't the only automaker making moves in Canada. Nissan Canada has announced a multi-year partnership with Montreal-based recycling firm Lithion Technologies. The collaboration focuses on recycling end-of-life EV batteries, aiming to recover critical minerals and reduce reliance on new mining operations. Under the agreement, Nissan will utilize Lithion's hydrometallurgical recycling process at its commercial facility in Quebec. 
This technology enables the recovery of up to 95% of critical battery materials and 98% of key minerals like lithium, nickel, and cobalt. Partnering with Lithion Technologies allows us to take a proactive step towards a more sustainable EV ecosystem, said Andrew Harkness, Director of Dealer Network Development, Electrification, and Corporate Strategy at Nissan Canada. Together, we're helping to localize battery recycling, reduce dependence on mining, and support the growth of Canada's clean tech sector. This initiative complements Nissan's existing global recycling efforts, including its ongoing relationship with Redwood Materials, a U.S.-based leader in battery circularity founded by former Tesla executive J.B. Straubel. Since 2021, Nissan has supplied production scrap and end-of-life batteries from its Envision AESC facilities that produced Nissan Leaf Packs to Redwood for recycling, enabling the recovery and remanufacturing of cathode and anode materials to support new cell production. As one of Redwood's key automotive partners alongside Toyota, Ford, and Volkswagen, Nissan is part of the effort contributing to processing over 20 gigawatt hours of batteries annually, equivalent to about 250,000 EVs. Lithion has previously partnered with automakers like General Motors, who made a strategic investment in the company back in 2022, and Hyundai Motor Group, who established a relationship in 2024 for collecting and recycling EV batteries from all of their Canadian dealerships for both Hyundai and Genesis brands. Every mass market EV maker has established relationships for battery recycling programs and localized solutions greatly improve logistics efficiency. Reclamation of battery materials is estimated to cost 20 to 40 percent less than traditional mining activities without the complicated geopolitics. This circular economy is key to the economic viability and environmental benefit of electric vehicles as they replace internal combustion automobiles. BMW Group, Samsung SDI, and US-based Solid Power have announced a strategic partnership to develop and validate all solid-state battery technology, taking the next step in realizing the commercialization of the highly anticipated chemistry. Under the deal, Solid Power will supply its proprietary sulfide-based solid electrolyte to Samsung SDI, which will fabricate the cells for integration into a BMW demonstration vehicle. The agreement builds on existing ties. BMW has been working with Solid Power since 2016 and made an investment in the company in 2021, and Samsung SDI has supplied batteries to BMW since 2009. BMW already has an i7 demonstration vehicle in testing with solid power cells that we reported on back in May. Mass production targets for their all solid state cells are still eyed for 2027. IANA, the charting network alliance of eight automakers, announced a partnership with Casey's General Stores to install high-speed chargers at select locations across the Midwest and beyond. The collaboration kicks off with construction already underway at eight Casey's sites in Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. These rechargeries will feature 400 kilowatt DC fast chargers while customers can use restrooms and have access to food options at the nation's third largest convenience chain. All eight stations are slated to open by December with plans to scale the rollout further. Casey's joins other retail partners like Sheets and Wawa in hosting IANA's charging equipment. The deal boosts IANA's plan of over 900 charging bays in construction or operation, more than doubling its capacity in just three months and edging closer to a 2030 goal of 30,000 stalls nationwide. Have you charged at an IANA station yet? If so, what did you think? Toyota and Subaru announced this week that the 2026 BZ and Solterra, both built on the same Toyota platform and featuring built-in North American charging system, or NAX ports, will now have access to Tesla's supercharger network as the sales of the refreshed models kick off. The move opens up over 25,000 DC fast charging stalls across the United States and Canada, including plug-and charge functionality for automatic billing. For earlier 2023 to 2025 BZ4X and Solterra owners, access to the supercharger network begins this month via CCS to NAX adapters. Toyota will provide complementary adapters through its dealers, while Subaru owners can purchase official adapters later this fall for around $230. Volkswagen and BMW are the last two automakers pending for access to the network. 
Last week, we talked about Rivian's micromobility spinoff called Also, who debuted their first products, including an e-bike called the TMB. This week, we published our deep dive going over finer details with the director of product line, Saul Lycan, and sharing our first ride impressions. We also talked to president and co-founder Chris Yu about the business side of things in our In Charge segment. I'll link both videos here and at the end screen if you want to watch those next. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. We hope you'll consider subscribing and sharing this video online so we can continue producing this show among the other videos that we create here. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.